we were given um, a brief of the project which highlighted the constraints and also posed us the question how we would improve movement and connectivity. I mean, I think the other thing is just sort of understanding the value of the public realm. You know, it's this forgotten realm that everyone experiences every day, irrespective of you know, where they're from. Everyone steps foot on a street, and yet the quality of those streets isn't so great. The project was basically dealing with green infrastructure and dealing with how to deal with the urban massing and the population through retail and on the streets. Yeah, we chose two locations, so obviously the stretch of uh, Tottenham Court Road to Oxford Street, but more importantly the, the stretch from Fitzroy Square down to Soho Square, and what we were trying to do there is to uh, sort of draw to people's attention the fact that we need to be connecting those green spaces together. So how can you actually prioritise or design around those periods of time where people can dwell in certain areas and where people can actually walk to A and B without being bumped into a lot of people. So being out on site at that time and different particular times, we understood how vehicles were the most busiest at this time. Where were people dwelling and where people weren't dwelling? It's always so much better to actually go and see, hear, smell, use your senses to, to uh, and ask lots of questions to find out exactly what's what the issues are. Since we all had this uh, image of a shopping district uh, for this street, we haven't even thought about what's the air quality, what's the matter of being in an environment with a green infrastructure or with trees or with no trees. So all these totally uh, change our approach to the site after having the presentation. So. And in the main of Oxford Street, we thought about creating like a drainage little mm -hmm. rain garden in the middle mm -hmm. of the street. Mm -hmm. It's part of a larger strategy mm -hmm. where the main spine of Oxford Street we would restrict to pedestrians and also for yeah. drainage also in conjunction with maybe trying to reduce traffic to only what's needed. Mm -hmm. And then drawing on what we've seen on Oxford Street we've implemented that on quick sections and plans and so we've got ideas of green roofs, cleaning, air quality, green roofs doing food production, as well as um, shared open spaces on the street to deal with the actual density and the population that we've figured out from Oxford Street. So one of the ideas that we discussed in our group this afternoon was the idea of Oxford Street being an arboretum and having a big kind of compilation of different trees from around the world and seeing what would exist there well and how you could kind of curate this diverse selection of trees. And if I were to take the idea forward, it would be to do some more research in um, what trees were appropriate for this kind of con very urban condition with lots of um, pollution and uh, what would thrive in that condition. I mean, I think the, the major lesson is like sometimes the changes that it doesn't need to be such infrastructural and you don't need to just go on a tabula rasa and do everything all over again. You just need to get what is there, what, what, what's there already and just enhance it and and maybe manage it mm -hmm. better. One of the really important things about today's workshop is the inclusion of a range of students with diverse experiences and who are studying diverse subjects. I've really appreciated working with people from lots of different disciplines and I think that helps kind of every project that I've ever worked on has benefited from that. Looking at green infrastructure makes you think much more about kind of the long term, the sustainability of things and the viability of the way that you work. Different points of view always add more value, mm. like like the fashion point of view that sometimes you don't think will be useful in an mm. urban context, but it is. Landscape architecture don't just work with by themselves. We have to collaborate with architects, engineers. So whenever we're designing something, I will always bear in mind that whatever I design has to relate to the building, the surrounding areas, and how it's made. It's nice to see how, even just not necessarily from a fashion point of view, but just different ways of people draw and people list and things, um, and the different ideas people have, that's always nice to see in any cross-disciplinary project. Sometimes I think there's a little bit of a gulf between what you learn at university and then how you apply it in the commercial world, so hopefully this is a way of bridging that gap a little bit. Today I think everybody has enjoyed, and in particular I'm hearing from everyone who comes from a discipline other than landscape, how much they have reviewed their understanding and appreciation and experience of the landscape. Regarding uh, 
our own projects, I think it's really important to understand that the city is not just where we walk, it's also all the facades, uh, all the rooftops, everything can be used to improve permeability mm -hmm. and to improve green infrastructure in general.